progressives might have had the best night, electorally speaking, in decades, if not ever. We racked up so many wins that anyone who felt demoralized after Bernie Sanders' defeat, who felt as if, you know, they wanted to check out of electoral politics, I'll admit that I kind of felt that way for a while as well. This proves that the left lives on, and I know that the pundits and the Democratic Party establishment, they were really hoping that we would feel as if electoral politics, you know, was a dead dead end and we should just stop focusing on it. But this proves that we can still win, and going into that next congressional session, starting in 2021, we have a sizable block now. Because we have a number of progressives who won their primary campaigns, And the establishment is noticing. Like, it's not as if these progressive upsets here and there are anomalies. These aren't flukes. This is something that is happening now more frequently. And tonight proves that. So I think the obvious victory that we were all expecting was AOC to get another victory when it comes to her primary. You know, she was facing someone who I didn't necessarily believe was a serious primary challenger. Although she did have the backing of corporate interests. So, you know, you never want to underestimate your opponent even if it seems as if they're a joke and they don't have a platform she took it seriously and aoc's opponent got her clock cleaned good now the next victory which is by far the biggest of the night came from new york's 16th congressional district where jamal bowman defeated elliot engel now let me tell you about this race elliot engel is an incumbent who has been in congress for decades This is an individual who had the backing of the Congressional Black Caucus, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Uh, Hillary Clinton even was trotted out to endorse Elliot Engel, and guess what? Jamal Bowman beat him, and he beat him by a lot. So that's honestly one of the biggest wins that we could have hoped for. In every cycle, at least once, we want to take out a really big Democrat, someone who is poised to be in leadership, you know, be the next speaker. And we couldn't get Steny Hoyer, but Elliot Engel, I mean, he's kind of higher up in the ranks within the Democratic Party. So he was a good target for Justice Democrats and brand new Congress, and they took him out. Awesome news. Now, we did not win every single race. You know, we followed dozens of candidates on this podcast. Um, We did get some losses here. So let's talk about them. In New York's third congressional district, Melanie DeRigo unfortunately lost her primary Although she got an impressive 32.5% of the vote, and this could still change. Keep in mind that only 38% of precincts are reporting at the time that I record this video. Um, But unfortunately, it looks as if she did not win. Um, And, you know, she was a phenomenal candidate. But with how impressive her showing was here, hopefully she will be back in the future. When it comes to New York's 5th Congressional District, we didn't get to speak to Shania Chowdhury. But he was a great candidate. Unfortunately, he did not win. Um, So this is one loss that, you know, definitely hurts. Um, But another one, you know, a candidate who we followed very closely on this program, I brought him on three times, is Isaiah James. And unfortunately, he was not able to win and beat Yvette Clark. You know, this is definitely disappointing. When it comes to New York's 10th congressional district, Lindsey Boylan unfortunately was not able to defeat Jerry Nadler. Now, an interesting note about this race is Lindsey Boylan actually got momentum after she was snubbed by Elizabeth Warren. I wasn't really aware of her race. You know, she was backed by brand new Congress, so I supported her, but I didn't know much about her. But, you know, Elizabeth Warren backed Jerry Nadler over her after Elizabeth Warren, you know, was grandstanding during the Democratic primary about how important it is to elect women. Well, you have an opportunity to elect a progressive woman and you just shunned her. So a lot of people on the left kind of rallied around Lindsey Boylan, myself included, because she got shunned by Elizabeth Warren, who she kind of respected, right? Unfortunately, Lindsey didn't get it done, but at 25%, that's still impressive. Now, moving on. In New York's 12th congressional district, Carolyn Maloney is very clearly vulnerable. She's an incumbent, and she's hurting. So you have Lauren Ashcraft with 13.5% of the vote. You have Suraj Patel with 39.8% of the vote. Very, very close here. Now, Lauren Ashcraft was the candidate who brand new Congress endorsed. Suraj Patel is definitely a trade up if he were to beat Carolyn Maloney. But, um, you know, I have my doubts about him when it comes to policies. He claims he supports Medicare for all and a Green New Deal. So, I mean, he's right on the issues. Although when you go to his website, you know, he 
has a banner of <laughs> him and Obama, and that doesn't necessarily give me the you know the most confidence that he's going to be a secure progressive vote for these issues. Nonetheless, I mean, Carolyn Maloney is absolutely horrible. Um, so you know, it's not done yet. There are eighty two point. 0.7% of precincts reporting. Maybe Siraj can get it done. Either way, this is proof that Carolyn Maloney is vulnerable. And she's, you know, her time is, is coming to an end here in Congress. So if she's not out this time, she's really vulnerable in 2022. When it comes to New York's 15th congressional district, this was kind of an open race. You know, there's no incumbent. I supported Samalis Lopez. Brand new Congress endorsed a candidate who's also great named Tomas Rojas. Um, unfortunately, someone named Richie Therese was elected. This is someone who, I mean, you can make the case that he's progressive. He claims he supports Medicare for all, but his record on city council shows that he's kind of weak. He doesn't hold strong. He's willing to buckle. And, you know, I don't have the utmost confidence in him. I'm willing to give him a chance. Um, but I mean, it could be, it could be worse, right? You can get someone far worse than him. He is kind of more of a Warren Democrat than, you know, a really strong lefty. That being said, you know, it is what it is. There were a lot of people running in this race. And, you know, hopefully he'll be able to prove me wrong when it comes to New York's 6th Congressional District. Um, unfortunately, the brand new Congress-backed candidate, Mel Gagarin, lost his primary. So, you know, I didn't follow this race, but he was a good candidate. And he was someone who I wish I would have, you know, been able to bring on the show. But enough about the losses, right? Because... We had a lot of losses. There were a lot of candidates running. But now let's talk about the victories, the really huge victories that we got. We already know about AOC and Jamal Bowman. But guess what? In Virginia's first congressional district, we got a gigantic win because Qasem Rashid won his primary with 52.8% of the vote. And if you don't know who Qasem Rashid is, he is a strong, strong progressive. If you look at his policy platform, um, it is incredibly detailed. It's thorough. He's a strong proponent of single-payer Medicare for all. This is someone who the left wants in Congress. And guess what? He just won his primary. Out of nowhere. Great news. Another person who I wish I would have brought on the program didn't get a chance to talk to him, but he won. And this is huge. Like, this is... Such great news. Um, on top of that, Mondaire Jones in New York's 17th Congressional District pulled off an upset. This is someone who is a very progressive candidate. You know, he supports Medicare for all. He is a solid vote for the progressive bloc in Congress. This is absolutely excellent news. So let's just pause for a moment and recap. In terms of progressives, AOC won. We'll chalk that up as a victory, even though we expected that one. Jamal Bowman won his primary in a huge political upset. Rashid won his primary in Virginia's first congressional district. Another huge upset. Mondaire Jones won his primary in New York's 17th congressional district. It may very well be the case that we get a progressive beating Carolyn Maloney. It may very well be the case, numbers are still coming in, that Charles Booker wins in Kentucky. If that's the case, if, you know, all of this goes according to plan and the, you know, races that are kind of teetering back and forth right now end up going progressive, that means we get six wins, six gigantic wins. But taking away the ones that are up in the air, we still have four solid progressives just win their primary. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. And I don't think people realize the impact that this is going to have on electoral politics going forward, because the establishment wants you to believe that, you know, there's just not a big enough block of people who are lefties who support Medicare for all or Green New Deal. It's gaslighting, right? But that's what they want you to believe. But we're proving them wrong. This was a phenomenal night. And I'm exhausted, but I'm absolutely just thrilled to be able to bring you good news. Four progressive victories, maybe six. I mean, this is just, this is fantastic. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man. man.